Hello, uh, I, I assume we're live now. Um, my name is uh, Dr. Gupta, Rajat Gupta. I am a headache specialist, a neurologist, and a headache specialist in Austin, Texas. I've been in practice in a primarily headache clinic uh, for uh, over 20 years now, and um, uh, exclusively see headache in my practice. Um, today's topic is migraine triggers, and I wanted to also spend some time specifically on occipital neuralgia as a trigger. Um, why are migraine triggers important to identify? Well, there are three approaches to migraine treatment. Um, one is, of course, the treatment of acute attacks. Um, uh, this is when you have a headache, a migraine going on, and you want to try to uh, get rid of it, uh, make it better, so you can function. So that's aborted therapy. The second arm of treatment that you're probably familiar with, are, especially lately with some new medicines coming out, are preventative treatments. Uh, these are medicines or uh, agents like the new ones that come out and, and uh, are meant to reduce the number of migraines a person is having. The, the attack frequency can be reduced. But the third arm, which is often, uh, I believe, overlooked, is to try to identify triggers of migraine. Uh, and, and by identifying these triggers, we might be able to reduce uh, our migraine frequency by, by eliminating those triggers or, or treating those triggers. Uh, behavioral changes, um, uh, things like this, can often be very helpful. So, so as far as migraine uh, trigger identification, um, each individual migraine sufferer uh, has their own triggers, and, and so there's no test for migraine triggers. Uh, common triggers, though, uh, that often are uh, seen in many people who have migraines uh, would include alcohol, especially red wine, um, additives, in foods such as aged cheeses and preserved meats. MSG might be a common trigger. Uh, Non-food items that are common triggers include stress. Uh, stress is uh, uh, certainly a trigger through different mechanisms, but, but let us leave it at stress for right now. It may also play a role through occipital neuralgia, which we'll be talking about soon. Uh, weather changes especially barometric pressure changes can be a trigger. And of course, uh, for women, uh, their menstrual uh, cycle, the hormonal fluctuations throughout the month, especially right before menstruation, uh, can be a very potent uh, trigger. So some of these triggers, of course, we cannot avoid. Uh, barometric pressure changes with weather changes uh, are going to be difficult to avoid. Um, alcohol and certain foods, if you identify a food as a trigger for, for yourself, those can be potentially avoided. Um, stress, we like to think that we can uh, avoid stress or, or manage our stress. It's difficult sometimes, but stress sometimes can be uh, managed, and, and certainly if you can avoid certain situations that you know will cause stress, that might be an option. Um, Menstrual cycles typically are difficult to avoid unless, of course, you uh, take uh, hormonal medications that might be able to uh, alter uh, that cycle. Now, what I uh, have found in the 20 plus years of practicing uh, and treating headache, especially migraine, and these are typically more difficult migraine uh, uh, conditions that, that come to a practice like mine, uh, I found that in addition to all these triggers that I've uh, discussed and, and, and many others, uh, that occipital neuralgia can be a very potent trigger, uh, especially in people who are having very difficult migraine presentations. By that, I mean either very frequent migraines, uh, severe migraines, and, uh, and those that aren't responding uh, adequately uh, to treatments, like the aborted treatments and the preventative treatments that I uh, had mentioned. Um, 
occipital neuralgia is a uh, condition in which the occipital nerves, these are nerves that are in the back of the head, become irritated. Either both nerves, right and left, or one of these nerves can become irritated. These nerves are outside of the skull. They have nothing to do with your brain. Uh, they're just underneath the skin and the muscles and the scalp and the back of the head. And when they become irritated, which is a common phenomenon because of their location, they're vulnerable. When they become irritated, they can be a source of pain themselves. This pain can be oftentimes in the back of the head where the nerves, nerves are actually physically located. But they travel from the back toward the top and toward the crown of the head. And, and so pain can be also felt in the crown uh, of the head. Uh, and sometimes uh, referred pain uh, can be felt around the eyes or behind the eyes with occipital neuralgia. Uh, so even though the nerves don't go to the orbits, to the eyes, the pain can be felt as if it's coming from the eyes. And, and oftentimes I've found that people mistake this pain for sinus pain. So uh, almost every day I hear uh, from my patients who I'm seeing, uh, who I suspect have occipital neuralgia, that, that for, sometimes for years they've gone uh, with the assumption that this was related to their sinuses or to their allergies. Um, now, in addition to causing pain themselves, when these occipital nerves are irritated, they can also be a very potent trigger for migraine. And so, uh, in addition to having pain frequently from the nerves, uh, a person may then also experience either frequent migraines and sometimes even daily or constant migraines. And I've definitely seen uh, all of these uh, variations. When I suspect that occipital neuralgia is contributing to uh, someone's migraine condition and uh, their presentation to my practice, uh, I try to confirm it. Uh, one clue, in addition to the symptoms that I just described, uh, might be some tenderness in the back of the head uh, where these nerves are actually physically coursing. Um, if there's some tenderness there uh, and the symptoms seem to uh, correlate, then what I like to uh, do is uh, confirm the diagnosis. These nerves don't show up on scans. Uh, there's no test for this condition. So the only way to confirm the diagnosis really is to do uh, a small injection using a very small needle, at least I use a small needle and, uh, and uh, uh, placing a little bit of numbing medicine around these nerves. So we're talking about an injection here at the back of the head. And it's not a spinal injection. It's, 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 it's above the base of the skull. And I always like to point out to my patients that the, the needle is uh, going very shallow. It's, it's staying outside of the skull, just going underneath the skin. But if you can numb up these nerves, and if there's then relief of pain, that's a, a very nice diagnostic confirmation. Now, usually I, I mix the numbing medicine in with some steroid as well because the steroid can act as an anti-inflammatory and, and provide longer-term relief if that nerve is uh, actually uh, irritated. So uh, by doing this, uh, if there is a response and if there is some improvement, not only do we have then a diagnostic confirmation, which is important for future treatment if it's needed, but uh, there's also a therapeutic effect and a person hopefully then starts feeling better. They start noticing perhaps a uh, resolution of their uh, daily headache uh, patterns coming from occipital neuralgia, but they also may uh, notice, I'm sorry, I, I guess there's some background noise, but I do not know I think the, the fan in the computer is is making noise, and I'm not sure I can turn that off. Sorry. I hope everyone can hear me. Um, so with the, uh, with the improvement in migraine patterns, uh, we can then uh, hope not only for fewer migraines, but also I find that when migraines and occipital neuralgia specifically is treated, that migraines respond a whole lot uh, more effectively to the medications that we use for migraine abortion and migraine prophylaxis. Um, other uh, 
features of occipital neuralgia, uh, by the way, uh, include interference with sleep. So these nerves, because of where they're located, uh, if they're already irritated, they can become more irritated uh, when we are laying down in bed. Uh, just the weight of our head on the pillow can, uh, can cause more pain. And so uh, oftentimes my patients who have this condition tell me about their headaches waking them up uh, in the middle of the night uh, or waking up in the mornings with a headache already present. That's a really common uh, feature when acceptable neuralgia is present. Um, a lot of my patients uh, over the years have tried changing their pillows, so a very common feature of, uh, of the history is that is that several different pillows and even bed mattresses have been tried over the years. Um, so these are all clues that I use when I start suspecting that occipital neuralgia is present. So um, that's my little spiel on occipital neuralgia specifically. Uh, certainly uh, there are other potential triggers for many people who have migraines that I wanted to bring your attention to occipital neuralgia because I've noticed that in my practice it's a very common trigger, especially in those that are presenting with very difficult migraine presentations that are really uh, interfering uh, with their lives.